welcome to GoggleCam, the internet's first first-person video of how to do lab. When you're done with the alignment procedure, it should look something like this, where the spot is being reflected off the end of the cantilever. Probe anywhere near the sample surface that we want to scan. We can motor down, click this button here to get to the motor's control. We can motor down the, the scanner head so that it gets closer to the sample surface. And I do that clickwise. You can see it's moving closer. Now we don't want to get too close yet we'll, because we don't want to accidentally crash into the sample surface. So let's look at what the sample surface looks like. Okay, so that's our sample surface. We're going to go ahead and do an auto-tune. Let's do a full range and see what we get. Okay, so the instrument is finding the maximum, the resonant frequency maximum and status withdrawn. Okay, I'm going to put the cover on. Cover keeps dust out and air vibrations like me talking to auto engage. So this is the engage dialog and you see it quickly zoomed to the surface. And now what it's doing, it's hard to see in this view, but here you can see the Z position is changing. Once the tip is engaged, we get the scan control box here. And what we want to do is to look at the phase mode, we need to pick that in the channels. So height, forward and backward is useful. Tapping amplitude we used in a different experiment. This time we're going to look at phase forward and phase backwards. Okay, now check and make sure 10% over scanning. Let's start at a large area scan so and go slowly at low resolution to get an overview of what the sample surface looks like. Now that we have our wide angle scan completed we can zoom in on area of interest and there seems to be something happening here right in the middle of the image and some changes in phase so what we can do, switch to scan area mode in our scan control box and click and drag the image that we want and then we can select part of the screen to zoom into using this box here. So we can click and drag to make the box bigger, click on here to move it. And let's see what's happening right here. If we right click that will send the microscope settings to zoom in on this area. And then we can scan here. We're gonna let's increase the resolution and the speed. And we can now scan that area because we have a closed loop mode with the calibrated large area scanner. <coughs> Go back to profile and see what the height's doing at this faster speed. Our gains are too high. We get those ringing, so let's turn down the gains. Now, this is the height or topography image. These images are the phase signal, the, and it's covering the same exact area as the height, but it's monitoring the probe is monitoring a different channel. The phase has to do with the difference between the waveform that's being applied to the tip by the tapping motor and the waveform that is measured at the tip when the tip is interacting with the surface. So the difference between the start of the waveform is the phase. And this difference occurs because of interaction with the surface. So for example, if the surface is hard, the probe will bounce off. If the surface is soft, there'll be some give before it rebounds. And so that might slow the phase down as compared to here. So there should be a phase contrast between a hard surface 
and a soft surface. Similarly, if the surface is non-sticky or sticky, we, we can get a, a phase contrast. So the phase signal here has to do with the physical properties of the surface. In this case, we have a polymer, so we'd expect a certain amount probably of, of squishiness and maybe a little stickiness. But we also embedded material into the polymer, which should give us uh, a harder type of sample. Now, well, we have to be careful though in interpreting. Here is a bright spot in the phase image, which may or may not indicate a harder sample. It might also just indicate that there was a change in the height. So here's a high spot in the height, there, the topography image, and here's a bright spot in the phase image. I think those are the same exact spots. We can also check phase forward, phase backward. We should see similar contrast. If we don't, We only see it in one direction, that might be, a, again, a, a height effect. As our tapping probe comes along and hits an object that's higher, that will change the amplitude of the tapping, but it will also cause a temporary shift in the phase. So that temporary shift in phase would look like an edge to a surface feature, like right here. Maybe, there's this, maybe this is an edge effect here. If your data acquired, you can open it in the nanoscope analysis program is also icon here on the desktop. Do file open and this is a little clunky it's not actually a Windows uh, software but you'll find your sample in your documents folder the Brooker capture and then today's date and then here's our the date and time and then the type of data this is topographical data forward topographical data backwards tapping mode phase signal forward, tapping mode phase signal backward. So if I recall from our scan, the backward topographical image looked the best. And so here it is in grayscale instead of orange scale, but you can change the color scheme. And one of the first things you want to do before, when you're analyzing an image is to flatten it. Here's the flatten icon here. Here's the flatten controls press execute and it will undergo the flatten control that you set here. If you don't like something you can always undo and it saves versions of, of all your manipulations to the data file so you don't actually corrupt the original data file. So that's the topography we saw. There's pits, lots of little round bumps and a, a large uh, bump here, and some other higher spots here. How does that compare with the phase image? So this is the backwards, so let's look at the backwards scan of the phase image. And here we see a really bright spot where that large particle was. And here is bright spots corresponding to these higher portions of the sample. So I suspect that this phase contrast that we're seeing bright spots, meaning change in phase, that are actually only due to the change in height. So this this bright spot means a tall spot, and here we get a bright and then dark uh, response in the phase as we go over that high spot. So that kind of tells me that the phase is probably due to height changes because it's the phase is different on the front end and the back end of this bump. If it were a, truly a different material, it should get a, a different phase signal consistent throughout the material and not change at the two sides of the material. If you want to save this image for your report, right click in the window with the image and you can, it opens a, a copy tool or export tool. So you could export this display as a bitmap or JPEG file to go into your report. You can do that with the height signal. You can also do that with the phase signal. 
and you probably want a more descriptive title than just phase or height and then you can report these images side by side in, as a graph in your final lab report.